So hello and welcome to the Lewis Nichols Show. And I'm really excited to bring on my next guests because they um, they weren't able to, to make the reunion. And so many of you have um, asked, but they're actually a real life married couple. Um, for those of you that don't know. So let's say hello to Leon and Vanessa. How are you? Hi, Lewis. We're good. Thank you. Very, very much looking forward to this um, uh, broadcast marriage counselling session <laughs> we're going to have with you. Do you know, it, it's been the funniest 10 minutes watching you guys set up for this interview. I think it's the, <laughs> the first it's ever happened. It's just been fantastic watching you both. I feel you need to be on Gogglebox. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I, my I'm, mother and should be on Gogglebox, that's uh, for sure. I, I think you'll hit the glory point of being with us, right? Because you were just going to have like 20 minutes or so. It's going to be fun. But then when you have to fucking live with us, <laughs> it's a real pain in the ass. I mean, <laughs> not so much Vanessa, because she's obviously lovely, but I think living with me is hard work. Yes. It Oh, she seems to agree. I mean, first of all, thank you both so much for, for coming on. It's it's so good because so many people were talking about you uh, on the reunion. We've got lots to, to chat about. Um, but I wanted to start with Vanessa because obviously on Waterloo Road, we saw you first uh, playing the role of Sue, who was kind of a bit of an incompetent teacher. Um, you know, she was paying uh, Barry Barry for, you know, to manage her classes. Um, she was in love with her little twinkle. So... <laughs> Well, how did you <laughs> get? You forgot Twinkle. I forgot Twinkle. That was the nickname, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Funny. I mean, how did you get your part in the the show? Did you have to audition uh, to you know to get it? I did. Do you know it was it was actually one of the most unusual auditions I'd ever done. Um, one for so I had only just had my daughter, so I had like a newborn baby at home, and as actors, all we ever want to do is work. And as soon as I had my daughter, I was like, oh my God, I, I don't want to work. I just want to be at home with my daughter. And I said to my agent, I'd done a few little jobs straight after having her in this disaster. And I said, I just want to go for one episode of things that are in London. So I don't have to travel with all the paraphernalia of babies, cops, you know, car seats. It was a disaster on a, on a previous job. Sure, sure, sure. And then cut to, you know, oh, we've got you an audition for Waterloo Road. And I was, I, I've been a massive fan of Waterloo Road. I watched it from the beginning, loved it. And um. I was so excited. I was like, oh, so it's just an episode then. And I'm obviously, I'm from Rochdale originally. And I thought the show was still filmed there. Like, no, it's a, it's a series like regular and it's filming in Scotland. And I came home and she was all up in the head about, oh, I don't know if I should get, I was like, one, you haven't even got the fucking job yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, just go do the audition. And if it comes to like, if it works out, yeah. then we'll cross those bridges when we get to it. Chill out, so, go and fucking do the audition. So, and then say the so, wet, so, day came of the audition and our daughter for the first time ever was literally so poorly and was projectile vomiting everywhere and I got dressed up and it said you know dress like a smart teacher you know she's be an air steward I was all done up vomit everywhere so I ended up I said Leon that's it I'm not going I'm just not it's not meant to happen I'm not going I can't leave the baby and Leon Leon and I basically and I just like stood in our underwear because every bit of clothes got sick and he's like just go just put some clothes on and go she'll be fine I what I wiped a few <laughs> bits of carrot and sweet oh, potato off of her I the literally vomit. went in um my jeans Ugg boots and a black jumper that I didn't realize had vomit all the way down it in in my hair I didn't have time to that I turned up I was a steak I go and there's a few recognizable faces of the TV and they're all dressed immaculately and I'm trying to go into it trying to just get pit bits out of just food and sick and it was horrible and we'll be going and everybody's there producers directors exec producer and they're like wanting to do the chat and I'm a bit like um guys can we, can we just get cracking on with this please because I, 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 I really don't I'm sorry I really need to be somewhere else and I think they're a bit like oh you should be great for the audition anyway we did the scene and they're like, can we do it again? I'm like, do you know what? No, I've really got to go. I've just got to go. Anyway, it's really nice to meet you guys. Um, I'm just, and I like, literally fell out the door. Anyway, and then I called Leon on the way back. And actually, really, that kind of worked really well because I didn't worry about it. I just wanted to get in and get out. And then um, a week later, my agent rings. saying, oh, they really love you. You're on a short list, but they're casting all around the country. It's going to be about three or four weeks before we hear anything. And in this time, Leon had been offered a job in Morocco. 
And um, the production company very kindly said, you know, well, if, you, if your wife and your baby want to come out, we'll get you a house. And I was like, well, that sounds pretty nice, Morocco, baby, lovely. So I said to my agent, look, I can't wait three weeks because my husband and the production company are about to book me a flight to fly to Morocco in about four days. So they either want me or they don't. And the, my agent went back to them and said, take her or leave if you want to. Now's the time. And I got offered the job after one audition. That was it. We had four days <laughs> to, pack, our to pack the house up and moved to Scotland, and then I had to fly out to Morocco. Vanessa, I drove all of our stuff up, right? With, the, with Our daughter had this like big toy teddy giraffe, and the only way I could fit it in the van was by having half of his neck out of the window. <laughs> and so, so I was driving up there. Vanessa was flying up to Scotland, because like, just with the baby and everything. And um, uh, Vanessa was so flustered, she dropped the baby <laughs> at the airport. No, I'm gonna say this. and. Well, you've got to think about this, Lewis, because our child is already slightly brain damaged because I'm 50% responsible for the <laughs> genetics. So she just finished the, the child yeah. off. I lo managed to lock the keys of the house in the house as well. Uh, it was just a disaster. <laughs> and, and with my mobile phone, the keys and the mobile phone, and then going to Heathrow, I dropped the baby. It was, it, she actually so you know that Sue Spark uh, clutch yeah. in her? That came very easily. <laughs> Very easily. And they did say, the producer, when I got there, and I, I arrived in a, you know, no phone, no key, no nothing, no one could get in touch with me when I went to the airport. I was literally crying. I was a stay, um, baby strapped to my chest. And they were like, you mean, you just walked in and you were her. You were just her. You just, you just couldn't, you were just all over the show. Do you know what I caught myself doing the other day as well? What? Right? Because I remember working on that scene with you so much. And then obviously it being on and we watched it. Um, but... I found, I found myself the other day, you know, like you just get an earworm from somewhere and I caught myself and I was just like, I was in, um, down the end of our garden and I was just like, the screaming jelly baby <laughs> experiment. I was like, fucking hell, that's a blast, blast from the past. Why am I thinking of that? And it wasn't even conscious. It just it came out like a little brain burp. Yeah. I mean, Leon, how did you get your part then? Because obviously, um, oh, so it was kind of like a help in hand to get you to part. Well, they, interestingly, no, they, um, no, no, they, they were, so we found out they were going to bring in a love interest with Sue, but it was going to have a slow burn because it was going to get with someone else, they were going to have an affair. And I was like, oh my God, Lou, would be perfect for this. Leon, Leon, you should, you should get your agent onto it. Agent, call the agent, agent goes, I've tried. They will not see you. They don't want to see you. It's like, oh, that's a shame. Um, so then I took in, Leon used to be a chef at Sierra, the most amazing baker. And you're on location uh, one day, in the and, rain. And I took a, a cake and I took Leon showreel and the producers are there and um, Simon, who I'd worked with before on like one of my first ever jobs as a director, I was like, Simon, I've got some cake for you. And he's like, oh, I said, no, 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 no. You can, you can have a piece of cake if you watch this. And I gave Simon Mayers the, um, your showreel and cut to an hour later, Leon gets a call saying they love you. We fly to London on the same plane as all the producers to do a, an audition. So these guys are 20 minutes up the road and then we all have to get on the same plane <laughs> to London <laughs> and go meet in, in, in the part of London where the casting is. It's like, this is the whip, but it's because... Um, you they, went in the last stage. Yeah. <laughs> you went in like the screen test stage. They, they, like they, the they've been... I think like what Vanessa got wind of, it was, it was my memory is slightly different, but I think it, you're, you're broadly right, is that um, Vanessa knew they were trying to cast this part but uh, they couldn't quite find something that was fitting or vibing the way they wanted. And so that's when she suggested me with yeah. the cake. And then I got this, uh, and my, when my agent did call up, I'm not with them now, so I can slag them off. Uh, <laughs> uh, they, they were like, we've got you this meeting. And I was like, no, you haven't. You didn't get me this fucking meeting. My wife did from the cake I made. Um, but you did, and then so Leon went down, and this all happened within like Friday they had the cake, Monday Leon flew, did the audition, and then the next day they offered him the part, and he started on the Friday, so from literally one week, it was, the, and, and you started our daughter's first birthday, um, yeah. and it was such a whirlwind, and it was amazing, and then we went, we went away, didn't we? Then it was, we had a week on, and it was a week off, and we went to Venice, and we left the child for the first time with my mum, I remember that. Vanessa. I, I mean, I can't believe that you're able to tell a, a show you either want me or you don't, and then you, they end up giving you the job, and then blackmail them with cake to yeah. get your husband the role. Oh, it's gosh, incredible. I should be more like that. I think when you have a child, also, I think, you know, you, 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 things, your priorities change, and 
you know, and being together as a family at that point was really important. And it was, and you just, you just can't be slapping around, bowing to all the pressure of what they say and jumping through hoops. And I think you realise it's just, it's well, look, you know, I, I, I think like, in the industry, obviously you're part of as well, Lewis, there's, it, it's this weird balance, isn't it? Where you want to work and stuff, but then there's something about like, people are turned off by any sort of desperation and the fact that if like you you're even a little bit like yeah you can take it or leave it it doesn't matter to me it just make i think it just makes you a little bit sexier you know i think at the yeah. time my agent was also really much playing that card because i mean he's, and, I, and I, mean, I happen to think like they were probably seeing some really good actors for hector but i think like the big bonus i got was when you're if when you're an actor and you're auditioning stuff oftentimes there's like several meetings especially for a regular before they pulled the trigger. And I think probably what worked really in my favor was this was the first time they were seeing me do these scenes where they'd seen the other guys do all of their stuff before. And, and so I think I probably had a, just a bit of um, a bit well, so of you rehearse to the scenes with the actress. So we can't, you that's, can't not, have... that's not a help, rehearsing with you. <laughs> <laughs> now you destroy me, I do have confidence daily. That's true. Yeah. Do you know a great thing about your character though? He was so cocky, arrogant, he was obnoxious at times, but he was unpredictable. So he, he at one minute he's trying to kind of make a move on Nikki Boston. Um but then he you just knew there was so much more to this character. And I think that's what we liked uh, as viewers because Simon Lowesley was one of the nicest guys, a bit too nice sometimes, you know. And I think when you've got someone coming in to break up this perfect love affair, that's what the show needed at the time. I always thought Simon Lowesley's character was like a sexy David Brent. Because <laughs> <laughs> obviously Richard's very gorgeous oh, and, right. and, and very good looking and charming and everything. But like there was definitely the way he played Simon Lowesley was like, it, it felt like part, there was, there was at least 15% David Brent in there. <laughs> Maybe a bit more than that. Well, actually. also Leon is unpredictable in everyday occurrences. So that, that, you no, know. I think, I think what you mean to say is I'm a very fine actor. No, you, you are. But I think that, that you never <laughs> have coming out of his mouth. Ever, ever. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I was going to say, when you, because you guys seem to be so much fun, when you think back to your time on the show, is there a moment that stands out as one of the funniest moments behind the scenes that you can remember, whether it's kind of uh, shooting a certain scene or anything that went on? Oh my God. Yes, I've got an immediate answer. Go so, uh, when, the, for me, like, when we finally got to the bit where me and the missus are having an affair, like me and Sue, like Hector and Sue are having an affair, and we got to do a bed scene, and and Vanessa was getting really embarrassed. Me, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Vanessa was embarrassed, and like they like they would do like they were obviously all of the crew and everyone else was being unbelievably professional, and it was a sort of closed set, so um, there's only like there's minimal people in there, and most people are like the other heads of the department are all on a screen and they're watching in another room, right? And the script supervisor, and so this is Hector and Sue consummating their relationship and I, yeah, no 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 but this was the, this was the first time you've seen them in bed together yeah. and it was us oh, having okay. sex it was, it, was it was in the hotel we did the hotel in the song. that was way before that that was where you were like i want to be with you forever oh so yeah. so when we're doing like i'll be with you for so that scene where i got to be with you in your house yes yeah um or sue's house and i remember like Vanessa was going, hang on, stop it. And we we're only doing a rehearsal. And she's going, stop it. You're really enjoying this, aren't you? You're really fucking... And I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, and she's like, stop it. Do, do you do this with other actresses? And I was like, well, no, but you're my wife. So, like, it's, it's fine. And, she, and she's going, I can't believe you're turned on and doing this. With all this <laughs> I, was like, I was like, what do you mean? This is two of my favourite things in the world. Like, pretty much having sex with you and being in front of an audience and doing some acting like i'm like if we could do this at home all of the time i'd be delighted like, so like to know all no but i mean like the, the thing is I, i've done sex scenes with other people and i've never had an erection before <laughs> and, and, and this one i was like i was like ready to go and when we when we did it because they were doing this lovely tracking shot that was coming up the bed and this and obviously it's all under the duvets and stuff but like my, you could see my posterior oh. going up and down, up and down, like this. And the script supervisor shouted. They were like, cut, cut, cut. And she's like, Leon, that's too much thrusting for before nine o'clock in the evening. You have to stop it. And I was like, well, 
I'm just oh, I did not expect that's the best funniest story we have ever had on any of these. That's not interviews. my fun story. I, I, to be honest, I just really enjoyed it. Whenever we were in a group, there was more than one or two of us, like just being really fun. All the little pub scenes we have with Vix and yeah. Richard would always be really giggly fun. I mean, we'd be drinking, you know, apple juice, but I used to, I used to get giddy. Oh, the apple yeah. juice, thinking it was wine. Uh, and you, and um, uh, who came in to play? Um, Nikki Boston's lover. Kirsten was yeah, lovely. and you got really uh, well heard. Girl in your scenes, my sister yeah. was lovely, and, and all the school discos are always quite fun because we always have dance rehearsals first, and I cannot dance for shit. I also loved. Well, you, what, what was? Oh, oh the dress up one. The dress up one where I had the neck brace. That was I'm getting hit in the oh, um, yeah. body moments. Mm, so anyway, that. Good. And then what was it, that? Oh, he's a lovely actor. He's a musician as well. Joe, what was his character's name? Oh, Lenny. Yeah. Lenny. Lenny, when Lenny was having his like breakdown in the exams and like you know doing like loads yeah. of like rising stuff, there was I was sort of given a remit, and for me it really made me giggle is because this was like the 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 sort of B storyline was our escalating of our relationship, Hector and Sue's relationship, and the director just said to me he was like, right, we're going to do a big wide shot, Leon, and. Hector just needs to be at the end of the exam or doing stuff to try and make Sue laugh. Oh, and I was like, oh yes, red rag, boom. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, I, I just remember really enjoying having to just uh, try and do lots of different things to, I mean, only a little bit got used, but I remember like really making Vanessa laugh and that was fun. Yeah. All the resilience camp stuff was quite fun as well, filming outside. Yeah, oh, I'll tell yeah. you about that. Right, that lock where we filmed it with um, the lovely Naomi and me and her getting in and out of that bastard water all day. Uh, I think I enjoyed that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they told me, some of the crew said they'd shot Highlander there with Liam Neeson back in the day, right? And so the, the same area and, and the shot was like Liam Neeson coming out of the water. And the, the electrician told me that obviously a very different scale of production that for that film, they spent five hundred thousand pounds a day with submerged electrical rods to make it nice and warm oh, for Liam no. to come out no, of. They oh, did yeah, they did. Real. They did. No, they did. Yeah. And you, you didn't get that. I did not get Good. that. I went in and farted, and that warmed it up. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Well, I mean, that, <laughs> a wee or weed, a weed. <laughs> that was such a big story for you obviously with Gabriella Walk uh, because she became your stalker um, and she was this really dark character and there was a, there was history there as well and I mean there were, there were times when we saw the vulnerabilities and why she was the way that she is that actually we saw Sue kind of you were softer to her you you kind of felt sorry for this character because at, at first you you loved the fact she was getting a hard time uh, but what was that? What were your memories of that storyline, Leon? You know, with Gabriella Walk being your stalker. Uh, well, the thing I remember mainly being blown away by because there was there was lots of teachers that I'd obviously watched in other shows and knew their work and was very respectful of them. But I think with Naomi and and like all of the young cast, yeah. really, I just remember being staggered at how good they were at acting, <laughs> and because I was like. Fuck me, like I wasn't that good at their age. And, 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 and they're just, you know, they seemed, uh, I just remember thinking they just had such natural ability. And I remember thinking, oh, it's gonna be really nice to see what they what they go on and do in their careers. Cause they all seem like, the, yeah, they all seem so right. talented. And, like, and, and, and to be honest, I think I learned loads about acting from them. I, so I, my memory was just like I, I was just like with Naomi, especially. I was just like I, I think she's. A, I always loved working with yeah, her. She I think she's so a much. cracking actress, and I don't know if you've spoken to her, but she was. I mean, she is still young, but like she was she's the most mature as person. She, yeah, I was like fucking hell. It's like she 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 was like she was the adult in the yeah. relationship with us off camera. She's so sweet. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people want to know, and I, I definitely do, where, how you guys met. Because I know you both did Heartbeat. So I've got this fairy tale that you met in Heartbeat, but I don't know if that's the case. No, I am. Um, no. Well, Vanessa, over to you. In no, um, <laughs> 2003, uh, the year Lee and I both were graduating from different drama schools, um, there's a spotlight is the actor's directory, and um, there's a graduate book, and basically... Me and my girlfriends picked Leon out of Spotlight Graduate as um, the hot guy 
of the year. One of. One, one of. of. He was on our hot list. He was Leon from Lambda and he was on the hot list. And just totally by coincidence, my drama school um, put me up for an audition. This is my final year. And I turned up at the audition uh, for an ITV drama and Leon was in the waiting room. And it was my first ever audition, so and I was shitting bricks. I was like, oh my God, it's Leon from Lambda. It's, it, it's Leon from the hot list. And I just was wearing a very fake juicy couture tracksuit that I'd bought from Hammersmith Tube Station, as you do. And I just had such got I just bowled over to you and went, hi, you're Leon, aren't you? And you, Leon's thinking, oh my God, no, do you I know said you're Leon from, from Lambda. Lambda. And you're like, do I know this woman? Who is this girl? Just mm. chatting away. Anyway, we got talking and then we got told off because we were distracting other people. We were flirting too much, yeah. <laughs> and then we basically said our goodbyes. Neither of us got the job. Um, and then cut to sort of four years. Ben Wishall got my part. Never heard of that guy since. <laughs> 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 Poor guy, I didn't get that killed his career. <laughs> um, and then four years later, um, I have been in heartbeats since leaving drama school. I'm leaving. Um, and in this time, we both work with people we both well, knew. We sort of, you know, quite a small world, you know, through drama schools. And um, we sort of pretended that we'd be like, oh, when we knew someone on another job, like, oh, say hi to yeah. Vanessa or Leon. And we did, but we'd only ever seen each other like for. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah, um, and then long story short, Leon gets a part on Heartbeat. I've already left the show two weeks earlier, and um, we in the October. I think I left in the July. You joined in the July. In the October, it's a press launch, and I get picked up in a lovely Bentley to take me to ITV to talk about me leaving the show. And when I open the door, Leon is inside my car. I'm like, Oh my god, what are you doing? And he's like, I only took this job because I thought you were still on it. And then um, the what a brilliant <laughs> line. <laughs> What's a brilliant um, line. And then it was a bit flirty in front of the national press. Leon saying, what's your dream woman, Leon? Leon's like, oh, you know, she's like blonde, I'm like five foot how tall are you? <laughs> All this rubbish. So um, good good and, impression. <laughs> and yeah, so we, we, we did the press but, but, we said but, our yeah. goodbyes. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of, that was kind well, of- where I'm, where I'm most proud, Lewis, is I was like, I, I was single at that point and I was flirting. And Vanessa told me that she had a boyfriend, but I wasn't paying much attention to that. Um, but when we ended up finally getting together, the uh, she told me that two days after that, she had a fight. Because uh, Vanessa um, uh, was a patron for an ovarian cancer charity, an ovarian cancer charity, uh, and um, there was a, a ball that they were supposed to be going to, and her then boyfriend was like giving a bit of pushback about going to this ball. And Vanessa was had it, so they obviously had a little bit of tension in the relationship. Anyway, she was like, "Do you know what? Sod it! I won't say his name. Uh, sod it! And I'm just going to take that hot guy who was all over me <laughs> the other day during the publicity." Oh, might I take, anyway, I, di I didn't, I di you know, I didn't even have his number. Anyway, that was the October, cut to the following June. Um, my boyfriend of three years dumped me, <laughs> um, idiot. And um, I turn up for a Specsavers commercial uh, the day after, red eyes, great Specsavers, and I bump into Leon at Spotlight. I've got my, literally got my suitcase, because I've been literally thrown out of my boyfriend's flat. And Leon's like, hey, hi, can I take you out for dinner? Can I take you out for lunch? I'm like, it's, no, it's not a great time. Like, give me a call in three months. But you gave me your number. I gave, you his, yeah. I gave the number. And then three months later, Leon rang me and sang messages on my voicemail for a whole week until I agreed to go on a date with him. You know how shit I am with calendars? Because it was three <laughs> months to the day. And you know what? You live with me now. Like, like <laughs> admin's not really a strong point, is it? But... Like, I fucking obviously, but, I obviously, that place I was living in Crickwood, I was obviously scratching yeah. down the days. So the worst thing is, so we arranged to go on this first day, and I'm filming in Birmingham, and Leon's doing a job in Paris, so the times of being back in London at the same time were really hard, and I said, look, and I just sent a message, and I said, um, look, I, I'm, um, I'm in London on Thursday, if you want to take me out for dinner, that's your only night. Uh, and Leon says, great, and then I don't hear from him. So I'm like, oh my God, this is so weird. So Thursday's coming, so I haven't heard from him. The guy I'm working with, Matt Kennard, who also used to be on Water Road, who's married to Laura Aikman, who joined the cast after we left. I'm working with Matt, we're playing couple. And he's like, I think he's dead. I think he's just dead, this guy. He's clearly been knocked over. It's not you, he's an idiot. Just, just forget about it. So I'm having, um, I'm having dinner with a friend and this is night now, I'm meant to be going on this date with Leon, but I've not heard from him. And I'm like, what an idiot, what an idiot. He's chasing, chasing me and now nothing. And then I get a message at 10, 10 o'clock at night saying, hi, are you going to turn up or are you going to leave me here all night long? And this is back in the day before text messages really broke, but um, Leon had then realised that his message he sent me telling me the restaurant and the time was still in his outbox. And he'd been Ooh. at a restaurant for three hours waiting in a seat. 
So he said to me, just get in a taxi, I'll pay for a taxi, please come. It's not that far, because we're both in North London. And this was a restaurant that I used to work in as a waiter, and the staff, you could see they were like, they were going, oh, poor Leon, he's been so <laughs> And I'm going like, and, 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 because I thought that she hadn't responded, because our messages were all like quite spicy and fun, like in that early stage. And I thought she was just like really direct, and it was like, are you going to take me for dinner? I was like, yes, I am. And, and then and then I texted there, I was like, be here this time, boom. And she didn't respond. And I was like, oh, she's so cool. <laughs> she doesn't feel the need to like, because you know that, especially in this day and age, even when you've made an arrangement, people like, they confirm like an hour before, and like they're always like, yeah. really funny. Um, so I turned up, greasy hair, and, and no then, makeup, yeah. to this restaurant, and Leon had ordered every dessert off the menu. And it was like, oh, and yeah. So that was it. And then we, had we, had a we had a snog in the bushes. We nearly fell into a bush in, in Cricklewood. It was lovely. Yeah. Um, and that basically was was kind of it. We we were never separated since. Do you know, it. from every person I've had from Waterloo Road, Leon, you are the most like your character than <laughs> any of them. I mean, snogging in bushes, not caring if someone's got a boyfriend. I've never <laughs> never heard anything like it. It's brilliant. But do you know, I remember one of the directors saying to me, because I'm quite good physically, like active wise. Uh, I remember she was saying like when we, like I think even in the first few weeks of my character being there, I did some sort of like build up to it. Anyway, like training them and getting them. And she's like, it's so cool actually having an actor who can jump up stuff and like actually yeah. do it and be confident with doing it rather than- Leon is also a puppy dog. He has to be walked twice a day. He's got so much energy. Yeah. He doesn't get out of the house, like literally crawling. Yeah, Vanessa didn't take me out this morning, so I did a bit of shit on the floor. <laughs> 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 Vanessa, what, what was it like for you? Because Leo, when Leon was on the show, he was the, the sex symbol of the show. And I know that social media went crazy. So what's it like for you when you, ha when you see that attention and the messages that he's getting? Does it do you know what? I didn't because we still had such a small baby and she didn't sleep. So to be honest, that, that whole year was a bit of a, um, I, 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 I'm not on social media. So I didn't, I suppose I, I wasn't, as long as you could get the child to sleep, he was my hero. Do you, know, do you know what? The interesting thing about that is, because um, as they were sort of dealing with the uh, producers, I guess, how to kind of like reinvigorate the show. And obviously at one moment, um, before Vanessa's character left, like they were like, okay, Leon, your character's gonna be going and and Rich's character and and uh, Mr. Lowsley. And I, definitely that came as a bit of a shock to um, Richard. I mean, I'm always expecting to get sacked. So I think- Leon decommissions every job he goes yeah, into, uh, bar, bar the soaps. And, and then um, what was interesting though, was when we watched like the, the opening episodes and stuff, uh, at that point, I wasn't on social media, but all of a sudden, like, I got, like, these messages from the producers just to say, like, they were like, Leon, you're so good. And I was like, you're only saying that because fucking people are tweeting about it. You fucking sacked me, you bastards. <laughs> no, I'm like, yeah, you can't have me. Fuck off. I'm off to Mr. Selfridge, you wankers. <laughs> And, well, I mean, you, you've done every, you've, like you said, Mr. Selfridge, uh, one of the most popular shows, but of course, Coronation Street, the biggest soap that you can possibly do. I mean, what was that like for you, your first day? Uh, well, you know, when you actually get to, to go on the street and you see some of the legends that's, that are there, like Ken Barlow, uh, for instance. Yeah. That must uh, be yeah. I mean, like, for me, seeing Ken Barlow, like, amazing, like, like it's really, it's really tough when you, like when you see people that you you know so intimately, right? And yeah. Like for me, like, I've, 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 it's like Ken Barlow has, I think, been more of a dad to me in my life than my actual dad. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so like like having him there, and then the because my granddad as well, who's now passed away, but my granddad was a massive fan of Coronation Street, and so for him, when I got to go in and be on Coronation Street, it was like. I knew how much that meant to him as well. So it made me even more proud to be there. And then I'd, I, I, would, I'd, I got in there where they just moved to a new place in Media City. So they, they yeah. cause obviously the show was getting bigger and they were doing more episodes and stuff. And so they needed bigger studios than the old ones in Granada. And even though they built this whole new space and all this stuff, my first entrance, I remember going into um, the Rovers Return, right? And so like, they're like, you know, walk in. So I'm like, right, boom, come on in. And they're like, cut. And I was like, fucking hell. 
can't even walk through a door. What's up? And like, Leon, Leon, Leon. And because the way the directors are there, they're in like a little control room because there's multiple cameras. And uh, they had to come and give me this message. And apparently everyone who enters the rovers, now watch this when you watch Corey, is this, you, you can only open the door so far before like the back cloth really shows <laughs> that it's not really outside, right? And I'd opened it too far and too much light was bleeding in. So if you notice, everyone who comes into the rovers, if they show an entrance shot, you have to open the door and sort of weirdly <laughs> jump inside it and then close it in and walk in. And of course, you've then got to make that look natural and it feels really unnatural. The weirdest thing is when Leon was auditioning for Corey for that part, and they asked me to audition to play your girlfriend, to play your fiance. So they were like, this is brilliant. We'll put them together as a couple. It'll be the first time they've ever been as a couple on screen. Oh, yeah. And I was like, have you not seen Waterloo Road? Like, yeah. and then, and then like the part basically got removed from it. It's like, no, 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 we'll just take Leon by. Oh, <laughs> Come no. Hector and Sue. Come Hector and Sue. Come Hector. Hector, <laughs> Hector and Sue left Waterloo Road and then they turned yeah, they up on the, the papers. Papers. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. such a shame though. I bet you would have loved to have, to have gone on there. It would have been great. I mean, it wasn't, it, I think it was like a 10 episode part. It wasn't like a big stint like Leon had a couple of stints. It was just, but um, no, if I'm going and I'll go, I'd like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind a little, a little yeah, yeah. Before, it'd be nice. Yeah, and, and also as well, I think like, in, in spite of our jokes, I mean, I really love, I think Vanessa's a really gifted actress. And so like, all, as an actor, all you want to do is work with talented people. And so it's always nice. And I mean, she's a, she's a bit of a, I see you next Tuesday to uh, me, I should say. That's, that's why that's why you get that's why you get the <laughs> mug. Uh, because like she will literally do, she will never speak to another actor the way she speaks to me on set. Where like so the old stagey actors joke, right, is a bit like someone does something and you're like, oh darling, you're going to do it like that. Uh, she actually says that to me. <laughs> like she says it and like this like, I'm like Oh, Vanessa, I am a professional, kind of. <laughs> got very different methods of working. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to actually ask you both about the, the last term of Waterloo Road, because you weren't in that final, was it 10 episodes, wasn't it? You, you had left. I am the only character in Waterloo Road history to not leave through the gate. Yeah. But why did you, I mean, what happened with, because the, the, uh, the, the... That's it! Uh, the fans are going to love this! Uh, so I was, I was due to go back. And they, um, Warner Brothers bought out Shed TV and they brought in two new producers. Um, we were a week before going back to our flat in Scotland. We we'll 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 we've been there a year, all our things there. We've gone away for Christmas. They'd moved the dates back for filming. And a week before we were due to shoot, um, my agent called me up and said they had taken my option away and I wasn't going back. And I was devastated. But, well, that was, you know, I was guaranteed X amount of money for the next six months, and you know, we've got to but, get a but also, also it's the it was really shitty. I didn't stuff, get, yeah. I didn't get an exit storyline, and it was unfortunate because I would have rather have gone with Richard and Leon. Um, but they had said they were going to keep my character. They'd already talked through storylines, what was going to happen, and the new producers came in and they decided that story. Uh, had been I, done, I, 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 I think, went. I think, like, in order to sort of, I, I don't know if this is interesting, but like, what you can sort of hypothesize from that is. I think the new producers knew that unless there was a massive upturn in terms of viewers and stuff, that this they was, moved to BBC Three after. It, it was, from, it was we left. yeah, it was like. And then, then obviously, we were so popular, the show had to. No, <laughs> no, but, <laughs> everyone turned off because we went there. I, I, no, but it was. It, so I think it was like that was that was coming to the end of a big commission the BBC had given them, and I think the new producers mm -hmm. felt like. If they were going to try and get another commission, they were trying to inject new stuff. They wanted to show them their new vision of the show, and I think I was a casualty of that. Yeah, way, Vanessa so. sucked of the old. Wait, do you know what though? I had such. I, I mean, I can't. That the whole time I was there, I had storyline after storyline after storyline. I don't know what you could have done with Sue to be honest. After that, she's been through the ringer. So in fair, you know, it, it was it was looking back, it's fine now. But I would have loved to have had. I would have loved to have walked through those gates, but. I, I mean, the frustrating thing, uh, I mean, for me as a fan of the show was when it moved to Scotland, I was really kind of like, really, you know, I, I love the show in Manchester and I wasn't sure. But your character, especially Hector, you both brought such a energy where actually watching it, you thought, you know what, I'm getting to know and love these characters. And those final 10 episodes, I've said it openly on the other shows, were terrible. And I mean, that's the, I, when I watch it back on iPlayer, I cannot watch those final 10 episodes. And I genuinely think getting rid of both of you when we had just got to know the characters, especially with Sue, the first few episodes, everyone was so frustrated that this teacher was there. She's a bit dippy. 
you know, we didn't take to her, then suddenly you, you got to really love her. She was a really nice, down to earth, funny person. And I think it was a big mistake getting rid of uh, both of you on the show. And I do Wait, think it suffered. Uh, thank you, Lewis. My bank balance definitely agrees. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no, but, um, but I, I think that's the genius of those types of shows, right? Is what they can do is they can establish a character who initially you might not like or whatever. And then because they've got time, and space, they can then like peel the layers of that character so you get to see them. Do I mean, um, who did they do it with brilliantly on Corrie? Kate Kelly's character. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you know, when she started, Becky, when Becky started on Corrie, like she was kind of like a pretty much a minor role, right? And yeah. came out and you could see the moment when producers and, and writers and directors were like, oh, she's doing some really interesting stuff. Let's bring her a bit more into the center of the show. And then, you know, and then of course she becomes like the nation's sweetheart, <laughs> you know? And, and, and I think that's the beauty of like what they call continuing dramas, right? Is you actually get to spend a long time with characters and, and see them in lots of different situations. So you learn more about them. Well, what's, what's next for you both now? I know productions are only kind of just getting back up and, and running. So is there any kind of thing that you are working on in the near future? That yeah, you can I'm about? about to go into the shower and have a wank. <laughs> and um, well, we're both auditioning for stuff, but my, predominantly at the moment, I am writing and directing. That's kind of what I'm, um, that's where I'm, I'm hoping to, to be spending the rest of my career, screenwriting. I've just um, received a lovely mentor through Channel 4 for screenwriting. So I'm just working on, I've, I've made two short films. Uh, the second one's just gone out to all the film festivals. So it's very exciting, very hopeful. What's it called? It's called Cuckoo and it stars the wonderful Rebecca Atkinson who played Karen Maguire and Shameless for all 11 seasons. Oh, and your first one had- uh, And my first one your... had Chris Chung in called Secret Santa. It's, it's online guys, go check it out, Secret Santa. But also, also, as well, also as well, early Waterloo Road, um, who I believe Lewis has had on the show. Lauren Drummond. Oh, and Lauren Drummond is in. Uh, Lauren Drummond, who played Mika, uh, is one of my best friends. She is also in my first short film. Um, and my second one, yeah, Cuckoo, has been back. Pierce Quigley, one of my favourite actors in the world. Um, and it was set in Manchester. We filmed that before lockdown. Um, and that's just gone out now. Um, and I'm now developing it into a feature film, which I hope to try and get financing for next year. Um, so yeah, writing, directing, but yeah, writing television, that is what I want to be doing. And Vanessa's very good at executing on ideas. So lots of people, you know how like lots of people talk about, oh, I've got this great idea for a book. Or, oh, I've got this great idea yeah. for a film or whatever. Vanessa is very good at having an idea and execute and, and then going, I, I, I'm, go I'm going to finish this idea. And I have to say, I think she's a very talented writer and director. Uh, but she didn't fucking cast me in either. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way when you were just saying that about Vanessa being a great writer, she just looked at you and nodded and, yeah, I am. <laughs> I completely agree. <laughs> well, the BBC and Channel 4 seem to think so. Um, no, uh, yeah, that's what I really want to be doing. I mean, I love acting, but um, there's such a lack of control. And also, you know, now I'm, now I'm almost 40. Um, God help me, um, you know, just, just the lack of interesting roles, really. And I, I want to be writing them for women of my age, telling stories I want to see and that reflect the world I live in. So. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about what I've been up to in the last year, uh, Lewis. I, did, uh, um, I started working for Ocado and Morrison's delivering food. Look for lockdown uh, during, and most active. So I got, I, you know, I applied for lots of different sort of jobs. Got a job delivering for Ocado and they also sort of, subcontract work to Morrison's and so you're a Morrison driver. Anyway, I arrived at this one house, delivered their foods, you know, took because it's all doorstep delivery these days. And this woman goes, I know you. And I was like, I do. <laughs> but you was in EastEnders, weren't you? And I was like, I was like, no, 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 no. And she goes, you was? Hi, Derek, Derek. It's that guy from EastEnders, isn't it? And I was like, and I, I wasn't in East, EastEnders. And, and, and I'm going back and forth to the shop. And she goes, you was? You was in EastEnders? I said, no, <laughs> I was in Coronation Street. So I don't know. And she's like, no, you were definitely in EastEnders. <laughs> and when she said to leave it, I was like, oh, you got me. <laughs> Who does she think he was in EastEnders? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, probably, um, what, was, what was the dog called? Well on. Uh, well, I was, yeah, that's a bit funny, well, I <laughs> Vanessa, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, you mentioned obviously writing um, 
that your you know your big passion now for you as an actor do you find it hard when you're writing and you kind of see that, that they're you know putting it together do you kind of feel like i want to be in that or I, I could play that part better is it hard to separate being an actor and then being a writer i act out all the parts in my head so i, I you know I, I think i can play them all um but uh do you know what i should do lewis maybe i should live stream uh vanessa <laughs> just a cam watching vanessa write because honestly it's so entertaining because like it's not like she's there like in some deep flow state. She's like, she's really acting out absolutely <laughs> everything. No, I always, I mean, you know, I, I, I always imagine myself as a character, but I think I wouldn't be like, my projects are quite big. So I'm not gonna say, well, you have to take me, otherwise you don't get my script. Um, uh, yeah, I'd like to play all the parts. I, I'd like to, I've written my, my, my sort of comedy, Unlucky is about a woman who's very unlucky in life and then meets a real life leprechaun. I'd love to play that part. Yeah, well. <laughs> and on, on uh, uh, but I think on a serious note as well, I think the one, so sometimes a lot of new screenwriters, they're very sort of cerebral and good at writing and, you know, like, like unbelievably sort of vocabulary and everything like that. And sometimes they struggle a bit with dialogue in terms of making it feel like it's natural. And I think every script I've read of Vanessa's, you can tell, like, these words feel like they've been like live through a person. Well, no, they sound, anyone could, you know, you, you could speak them. They yeah. sound real. We, we, we've read a lot of scripts where you're like, how am I meant to sound like a human? Like, does it's, it's Especially because like, you know, let's face it, even in like continuing dramas, you might be given a big bit of exposition that you've got to get through and try and make it not just sound like, hello, here I'm coming with some important information, viewers. Listen up now. You know, yeah. so yeah, it's good. You have both been the funniest guests we have ever had on the show. Like, I actually cannot wait to watch this back. I mean, you, you, <laughs> the chemistry between you both is just exceptional. Like, comedy gold. We're never going to work together ever again now. That's it. Very, Vanessa only really ever fancies me on camera as well. Like, when oh, we're doing yeah, interviews yeah. or stuff, like, she really likes me then. But then when I'm like. No, so, you're you look can I have a kiss? No. So as soon as this interview's finished, it will go back to that love's gone. There's going to be a lot of arguments. This is this just yeah, a fairy tale. I'll, I'll, I'll be sent down to the shed, mate, and I'll be just there crying and <laughs> masturbating. <laughs> About the time when we got together and it all looked so promising in a Bentley on actually, my way to we, ITV. We did, we, we did a job together at the end of last year, actually, where we played a married couple, oh, yeah. but it was all about domestic violence. Um, <laughs> I was like, oh, it's the first time we're getting to work together in years. And then, um, yeah, that, it was... It was, that, was, that, was that was still... I mean, it was bloody hard for Vanessa because basically Vanessa was crying non-stop for three days. And um, I was just being uh, uh, slightly unsavoury. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, it's good that you're still both working together, but genuinely, the fans of Waterloo Road, and when this goes out, you're going to get a lot of tweets and messages because you were both loved in the show. And like I said, I genuinely mean it when I say the show lost something when you both left. Oh. It really did. It was like an energy, something just, yeah, it, it felt odd, and I, I don't we like it. it back. Yeah, yeah well, we can't, that, now Ackley Bridge is on. You can't get in that. It's just the same show set, in, set, set down, well, back in Leeds, isn't it? Yeah. Try and get a part in that. Mm. <laughs> uh, and, and Lewis, I'd say I've got, I, I remember like when your first email came, like, came through by my agent and stuff, I was like, fucking love this guy look at him he is hustling he's out there he's not fucking you know like i was like there's a good cornish boy getting out there fucking like you know like he's in lockdown he's, he's had some stuff in is he is he gonna sit crying in his little hole like you leon no he's <laughs> out there and make shit happen and so i've got enormous respect for people like you who do that well, it's good to have a fellow Cornish person on the show because i mean penzance and you're in lou as well which is kind of the posher part of Cornwall for anybody that doesn't know. Um, yeah, it's great to have you on. But both yeah, of you. And yeah. like, look, now you're in Cheltenham. Like, you can come over into my garden legally. <laughs> and like, we, could, we could maybe like record us blowing each other off. Leon, Leon. Hey, where, where are you? To, are you in the Cheltenham area? No. Uh, not, I mean, nearer than Cornwall. We're in North London. So, I've, I thought you were in Scotland for some reason. Oh, I know in the show you were. I thought you actually lived there. No, oh, I wish we did. We love Scotland. Yeah, we we love were it. actually meant to go in February half term, take our child back there. Our, our she's daughter, red hair and she fits in yeah. Scotland, but um, obviously we couldn't go because of Our daughter's ginger 
and when we were there, like, you know, they have a national ginger day. Yeah. In Scotland and stuff. And I was like, this is what? And like, she just looked like she belongs. So yeah, yeah we love Scotland, man. Love it. Will she follow in your footsteps, do you reckon, in, in becoming an actor? Well, she's done a bit. No, 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 no. She will not. She will not. Um, very early on at her school and at her school, um, there's, there's lots of, like, we're quite exotic because we're the only parents who are sort of actors or whatever and, um, or working in arts and media, let's say. And uh, the, the, she did, uh, they did a, a little assembly and she did a very confident bit of public speaking. And this lovely mum called Zakia came up to Lila afterwards and she said, Lila, I just want to say, I was stood at the back because I arrived a bit late, but I could hear you, it's so clear your voice. Do you think you're going to be an actor like your mummy or daddy? And she was like, oh no. And she's like, oh, but why? I mean, you, like, you know, surely like them and you got so much talent. She said, she said, well, why do you want to be an actor? And she's like, I see my mummy cry almost every day when she doesn't get a job and it's not, it's too cruel a profession. And she said that at the age of five. So she's not, it's not going to follow in your footsteps. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Of jobs, she just she and now she's got a voiceover agent, she's eight, so well, <laughs> well, I, do, you, do you know what? I think if she does choose to, because obviously we have no idea yeah. and she'll find her own path, but if she does choose to, I think she'll go into it quite well rounded because it's not like I don't, I think she's seen the other side. I mean, she said to us the other week, oh, she's like, oh, yeah. Guys, why, um, no offense, well, no offense, no offense, <laughs> don't mean to cause any offense, but. You know, you, your friends, like, they, they work in the West End, and they seem to be... always in on the telly. They're always on the telly, and they're, they're the big shows. And yet, you guys never get any of the jobs you go up for. <laughs> like, why is that? I'm like, oh, the I'm curse not. of Friday, when the agent calls saying, sorry, it's not gone your way. <laughs> She sounds like an upcoming Simon Cow, just getting you down, giving you a reality check. Of oh, she does. she does. She does. She does. And she loves it when we do self tapes of direct and telling us what's good and what's not. Actually, this morning in my tape, she said, oh, I thought it was terrible. She's like, you nailed that, mummy. You nailed that. <laughs> I was like, okay. Shane Lyle is not the casting director. <laughs> Well, I can guarantee when this goes out, there's going to be a call for me to organise an event, an evening with Leon and Vanessa, where we get you both uh, both there so people can watch you. And yeah, you're hilarious. Right, so thank you, you, you know what, Lewis? Right? I built a pizza oven in my garden. You come on over, let's get in the garden, let's get on the Aperol spritzes, and let's go walk you through late night chat. We'll get Lauren dropping over. It's actually around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. It's been an absolute pleasure and such a laugh. So thank you both uh, for coming on. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Thank you. Bye-bye.